Okay, hello everyone. I'm Matthias. I work at Red Hat, and in this presentation, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about a work in progress I'm doing to try to see if we can uh, find a violation of the peer-to-peer specifications in a more in a more systematic way. And uh, yeah, this is a work in progress, so I'm not going to propose any concrete solution. But the idea was just to have the discussion. And uh, so for those that you are not uh, familiar for Virtio, Virtio contains the definitions of drivers and devices and how they interact. Also, feel free to interrupt me if, I, if you have any questions, because I'm going to run out of slides soon. And um, so yeah, the Virtio specification contains the definitions of drivers and devices and how they interact. The drivers are meant to uh, be deployed in an operating system that they are going to be a virtual machine, and the devices are meant to be implemented in virtual machine monitors, and the idea is they are going to emulate some physical device, right? And uh, we have different implementations of the drivers, like depending on the operating system, so you have Windows and Linux, and then you have different implementation of the devices, depending on the virtual machine monitors with different technologies. So for example, you have KeyMNC, RASMIMN in RAS, LibkeRun in RAS, and so on. Oh, wait, no. So even if we have different implementations of the driver and the devices, all conform to the Virtio specifications. Um, what I have been reviewing patches to the specification, but also implementing different devices, and I can say that it's sometimes tricky. One of the problems that I found was sometimes we have patches to the specification that they are for sure is the specification is written in natural English. Um, Authors sometimes means one thing, and we interpret another thing. So there are some ambiguity there. And also, when we have, for example, a new Virtio device, we don't really know how to test it. So what I do, for example, is I pick up one driver and I pick up the device. I do some stuff. Let's say, for example, Virtio console. So I send something from the virtual machine to the host and to the host back, something like this. But I don't have any systematic way to, for example, uh, uh, figure out if the implementation conforms to the specification. So, and, and also, any violation of the spec, I will consider that as a bug. So to open the discussion, I want to talk about one issue we have with the Virtio Sound driver last year. And you have the discussion there, and I try to to make an illustration about how Virtio sound works, more or less. So we have the guest, and we have the, go the host. In the middle, we have the beer queue. And uh, if we want to reproduce something, I'm talking about sound in the, in the host, what the driver is going to do is to fill the available uh, rim buffer, which is, as I said before, is a rim buffer. And then the device is going, is going to consume these buffers, and then put it again in the user ring. Here I brought some of the function that the driver use. So for example, in this case, this is what is executed in the context of the interruption. So that the device consumes the buffer, trigger the interruption, the function is triggered during the interruption, and then what the driver was doing at that time is just taking the buffer and put it again in the available rim. If we, if, we, if we see how the buffers were made, the driver was creating the buffers from a region of memory that was shared with the user application. So when the user applications wanted to play back something, it's going to just to query the position with that function, with the virtual PCM pointer, and get an address in which it's going to write something, right? So, in this diagram, what I did, what I highlight is the buffer that the device is consuming, consuming at that moment. So if we move to the next slide, the device starts to consume the next buffer, but then the driver put again the buffer in the available ring. At that moment, the user application is some, at some time is going to query the position and start to fill the new buffer. But we can see here is that 
the buffer is already in the variable ring and is already exposed to the device. So, but, and this is a violation of the spec because as we know from the spec, the device can pick up this buffer at any time. And this is what exactly what happened in our case. We were picking the buffer in the moment that the buffer was available in the, exposed, in the in a variable ring. And the thing is, we should not do it at that time. We have to wait a bit, otherwise we get all content. But in that case, the driver was not behaving as the spec meant to. So if we see the traces, this is not, this is not a good trace because I created with print k. We have to use something else like trace point or something else. But what I can see here is first the, the adding of the buffer in the variable ring at some point we can see that the user query the position, and at another moment after, we see that the device consumed it. But what we say is this pattern is a violation of the specification, because you cannot write when the buffer is already in a variable ring. So this is something that we like to detect uh, early and say this is, there is something wrong, let's say. I use this as a use case, but you can find other examples in why, in which there are some um, resulting implementation in which we violate the logical, the partial order that the specification uh, defined. So, what is the proposal that I tried to do in this presentation? And uh, something that is not concrete at all, it's just an idea. So, first, um, Define the virtual your specification with less ambiguity, let's say using a formal language, for example. I'm not saying to define everything in a formal language, just some part that we can leverage something to the fact that doing it. Second, from the specification, try to build room time observers that will detect violations. And what I'm thinking is that we could extend the virtual your specification itself by adding this formal specification, not only English, but something formal. Again, I'm not saying to do it for all the spec, just depending on your formalist, you are, you are going to be able to do it for some part. And for the first part, for the first item, I wanted to propose, for example, <coughs> final, final automata, which is another formalist, and this is the description of what I would like to detect based on the use case that I presented before. Before, so, crucially speaking, uh, is it that work? Oh, yeah. When the buffer is in, when the buffer is in the V ring, we cannot. Uh, we can, we, it's not in the V ring. We are going to be able to write it. If it's not, if it is in the V ring, this is going to trigger an error, basically. The model could be different depending on uh, how precise you want to do. The idea of this is to propose a formalism more than the model itself. Let's say. The other formal is that I was also playing with is the, it's a language called Cloud Constraint Specification Language, in which the invocation of a function is modeled with a clock. And we can imagine that each tick of a clock is uh, the invocation of a function. Um, I was going to create three clocks, for example, one for each function, and then I will go to specify a relationship, a temporal relationship between the instance of these clocks. In this case, I use it alternate with, which has a precise semantics, and this is the, the result of the simulation of this specification. This is what you can see as the, how I would like that things happen. And the second item that I presented before is, well, okay, we have a formal specification, how we consume it. And for the moment, I have been thinking two things. First is the, use the current runtime monitors that are in the kernel, so that they already asset final, final state machine as a formalist. And, uh, and then you build a kernel module that is going to observe certain trace point. In this case, since I'm talking about virtual will be some trace points in, in the virtual drivers. And then, since I am interested in the Behost user devices, which are in Rust, in the Rust VMM project, I was thinking to implement a 
a tracer that not only you instrument in the code to say, well, the code passes here and so on, you will accept also as an input the formal specification. So the traces, we're going to do two things. So first, going to tell you that the code executes something, but at the same time, you will, we will, you will feed the tracer with the, the, the formal specification, and if something is wrong in the event that, in the, in the sequence of the event that execute, something is going to happen, I don't know, warning or whatever. So I'm starting to work on this because I'm recently playing with Rust and I wanted to, how, to know how to implement a tracing in general, but the code would look like something like this, let's say. Um, so for example, here you can say you have some annotations <coughs> in the Rust defining some event, which correspond with the initial definition. Ah, sorry, sorry. So you have some notation, annotation in the code in, in, the, in the definition of the function, and here I, well, I, I add some, fee, some properties like an event, the na event name. Then, this is a very simple case for sure. Then at some point in my program, I'm going to instantiate the constraints. So I say, well, this is an alternate between these two seven. And then I will go into instantiate the tracer. So for example, in this case, just for playing, I execute in this order, so this this uh, invocation is going to, to trigger a violation of the specification. There are several things that you can see here. This is a toy example. Uh, I'm trying to play with Rust BMN and see where I can, how can I instrument this, but in something more serious, like Virtio Sound, Virtio Fisoc, or some other Behost user device. And you should know, I mean, in this case, I use this relationship between the event, but it could be something else. And you can, for example, if you have a state machine, you can, I mean, you can instantiate a state machine and write this in another way. So yeah, that is what I have to show. And I don't know if someone has any questions. Um, Uh, I know you have the thing. Hi. Um, yeah, thanks for the talk. Very nice. Um, I'm actually also a Rust BMM maintainer. I think we've, we've talked on, on Rust BMM before. Um, so I've also had the idea of, of applying formal verification to, to Rust BMM before, also because on Firecracker we've actually done something quite similar to, to what you're proposing here, um, not with the device drivers, but with our virtual devices where um, for part of our virtual queue implementation, we do actually have a handful of formal proofs that try to make sure that what we do in Firecracker conforms to the virtual spec. Um, well, what I was just wondering about is, so if you if you do this sort of like tracing style approach where you you execute your program, um, I'm assuming once, and you collect the trace from it, um, that is not because for formal verification what you kind of want to do is you, you you want to make sure that for all possible inputs that your program could possibly receive um, you will always conform to the spec or you will always uphold some sort of invariant that you want upheld um, whereas with this tracing approach don't you only verify that one specific execution flow say some unit test um, conforms to the spec so how do you how do you plan to cover all possible inputs no, but you're right, yeah, I had the same question. Um, yeah, I was talking with someone and maybe we can use a fuser to try to increment the, the coverage, for example. But yeah, what you say is exactly mm. right. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, we, I mean, what I missed to say at the beginning was I could not be exhaustive. In the All right, so in that, in that case, I do have a suggestion. Um, because so what we use in, in Firecracker, and I have a disclaimer, I'm from AWS, the tool I'm about to suggest is also from AWS. Um, but we do have um, what we call the Kani verifier, and it's a formal verification tool based on bounded model checking for Rust code, which um, it's, it has a similar approach to what you're proposing, where you describe your specification in Rust code, and it does do the, the exhaustive thing. So you, do, do you define non-deterministic variables, and then um, you have unit tests looking like proof harnesses where you just take non-deterministic inputs, you just pass them to whatever function that you want to verify. You don't need to modify the function. Then at the end, you just write an assertion. And um, 
you, you, you run it under Kani, which is a compiler plugin in a way, um, and it will do the formification for you. So maybe, maybe you could have a look at that. Yeah, I will. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't trust myself to throw that far. <laughs> Uh, one thing to remember also when you're declaring design, that is just a form of invariant, right? So when you just say, this is my expectations of a thing, that means I'm holding that invariant and then the rest can vary, which means your testing and your all that is much more simplified as compared to a formal verification, which, except for loops, has, in, has almost no invariance in there. So there is a difference. So were you, so then I'll pose the question to you, were you shooting for, an invariant-based analysis or a provability analysis? They are different. Yeah, I don't know. OK, <laughs> I know great. Yeah. <laughs> great. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, well, first of all, I'm, I mean, I'm very glad that I, mean, I see somebody making use of you know, uh, the, the work that I think was started by Daniel. Yeah, right? well, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, well, uh, we have, we have sorry, inter sorry I interrupt you, but we have a discussion with Daniel about this. <laughs> I think it was three, three, four years ago. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, but my question is, um, I, I didn't understand. So, are you trying to design a runtime verification monitor for uh, an instance of a driver, or for the Virtio framework to monitor, you know, any driver to behave according to the specific? Yeah, that's a good question because yeah, I had also the same question for this case. The Virtio sound was easy to do it. But the idea is to do it for any virtual device, which I don't think I am not really sure if it is, if it, how easy it is to do that, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the idea, since all virtual devices do more or less the same, so you put something in a variable yeah. and consume and so on, you have this half is true for all the devices, and the idea, is, the idea will be to generalize it. But I don't know how easy it would be that. I yeah, I think I don't know, but I think that maybe. Most important thing is to do it incrementally, as in, I mean, I, mean, I don't think you need to start with, the, you know, the greatest, you know, the, with the no, perfect. No, 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 I agree, yeah. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the important thing is basically, you know, if you start capturing, you know, the, the you know, the, the, the main states of the, mm -hmm. yeah. that would represent, you know, the, the specification, then, you know, maybe you can build on top and refine it. Yeah, yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Someone else has a question. Oh. My, just to let you know, my, my background is one is not 100% informal language, so maybe that is the reason why I couldn't answer you. Sorry, but uh, I did my PhD on that, but I are for sure topics that I don't I don't I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So so first of all, a gr great idea, and uh, I have several things to say. Uh, one. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, recently uh, I saw a lot of people trying to implement hardware and then coming to uh, Windows driver and saying, oh, uh, something is not working, something is crashing, and, and mostly it was because uh, the spec was not correctly implemented in the hardware itself. So it would be nice to have some kind of a framework verifying the hardware implementation. Yeah, sorry I interrupt you, but uh, yeah, I mean, in this this presentation, I, I did just one problem, but I already identify, identify a few. So we have a sort of families, let's say. Um, yeah. Yeah. S second thing, uh, um, um, <clears throat> if you look at the kind of more complicated uh, devices like network, uh, then we have things like um, uh, feature dependency, and depending on the feature, you have, for example, uh, Virtual net header size changes. So, how do you think about handling those? I, I don't know because I know that there is a limitation of the formal or of the formalist that I'm using. So, uh, in the formalist, for example, in CCSA, I don't, I, I don't have ways to model something like this. Um, yeah. Be, I, I, I think let's discuss it because I think it's kind of important if you want to add this formal uh, <coughs> uh, right. definition to the spec. Uh, I, I would want to see it as well. Right. right. Okay. And the third thing is, um, <coughs> uh, if you define something in a formal way, uh, please don't put Linux API because then on Windows we have trouble with that, right? <laughs> okay. Thank you.
so maybe I missed it actually in the talk, but I was wondering what is, from your point of view, the difference between the automata and the CCL? They are somehow equivalent okay. because you can go from one word to another. Mm -hmm. What I see interesting in the CCSL approach is that you can be more uh, shorter, so you don't have to dis design a stay machine, for example. So in one CCSL sentence, you can encapsulate uh, a more complex automata, and I was I was seeing seeing like that like a nice in that way, but only for the syntax, I will say. It. But then the problem with that language is become quickly become a bit uh, complicated, and uh, people has a lot of trouble to use it. So it's, it's, it's simple, out, it's simple to, almost everyone can design a steam machine, let's say, mm -hmm. in that sense. Um, okay, so I mean, I was just wondering, because you had those clock ticks in the CTL, CCL, um, but that doesn't, does that I imply anything about latency of things or anything no, like that? No, okay. because they are just, what you observed that they are was just, I mean, a solution of the <laughs> specification. So what the simulate, once you specify this, when you simulate, what you actually see is a, is a, a, a possible solution. So it doesn't care about the, the things that happen in the, means nothing what okay. happened in each tick because it's not associated with physical time, it's just logical time, so. Okay, that's, yeah, yeah thank you. Right, so uh, just thinking about it, uh, you know, from the specification point of view, I think um, first, uh, like, um, if you work through it, you'll find um, that a lot of behavior is uh, not covered by the conformance statements. Hmm. Like, we try to ask contributors when they do a description uh, to add conformance statements, but, uh, you know, we also don't want to duplicate everything in there hmm. and see things slip through. Uh, and, and also, um, everything that predated Virtio 1.0, hmm. we did go through it and try to write conformance statements, but hmm. again, we probably missed a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so there will, if, if you start basing your work on conformance statements, that would be, uh, uh, there will be work to write a lot of conformance statements. Right. Um, Another thing is that um, they haven't really been designed in, uh, with this kind of use in mind. So for example, the example that you gave, right? Mm. Um, so that's a conformance statement. That's a device conformance statement, mm. right? But it says device may, um, may use buffers in a specific order. And but you want to con convert that into, uh, in, you know, into some program that verifies the driver, actually. That the driver is ready to handle this, this kind of device behavior. I see. Okay. So, uh, I guess that's, have you given some thought to just like how you c convert conformance statements? Uh, I mean, um, no. No, I mean the idea. The, the idea, as I show in the presentation, is from that statement. Yeah, converted somehow in something that then you can check, like uh, an observer or whatever. But, I, uh, but if you are asking in something that is automatic to do that, I don't know. Hey, maybe it's a far shot, um, but there is some academic work on using neural networks to translate natural language to, for example, signal temporal logic. Mm. And sometimes it works quite nice, um, especially if the spec is not too bad. Mm -hmm. um, and, and related work where, where basically monitors are synthesized out of the translated spec, essentially. Right. So, so, so maybe temporal logic in general might be a formalism that, that could be useful for you. I'm not sure, but right. might be worth checking. Okay, thank you. 
Um, I mean, maybe maybe one idea for um, sorry, I can't see. Is, is it was it Michael? Is that yeah. your name? I can't see your badge. Sorry. Uh, one th one thing for um, what you said earlier that potentially those cases where it's about the um, interaction between the device and the driver could be covered by because um, um, the the in this case, for example, the the driver will always see the the virtual structures and everything at like a specific snapshot in time because concurrent things modeling that with, with formal language is incredibly difficult and I would say somewhat out of scope anyway. And so if you just take all possible Virteo state and you just put it into a completely non-deterministic state, um, so you run your formal proof for all possible queue configurations, all possible um, descriptor configurations, um, then you kind of cover every possible point in time in an interaction between the driver and the device. It's computationally very, very expensive, and these sort of proofs take a long time. Um, but theoretically, that should cover most of it, I think. Uh, so, um, so uh, your observer is in the corner, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I uh, so it, it is more natural to have this observer in VMM or kind of device implementation side because the, um, the device implementation is observing the behavior of the driver. So, yeah. Okay. So I think it's make more sense to have observer in device. Okay, yeah, could be, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's exactly, just to answer your question, that's exactly where it becomes murky because sometimes you say something about the device, but actually what you're saying is that, okay, so driver has to be able to handle all kinds of things that device has. So it's not always so clear cut. Yeah, the, the... It's okay. Okay. No, the, the monitors in the in the kernel. I mentioned this because we we have already some infrastructure to 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 check that, and this is why I wanted to see that the runtime verification is already in the kernel and they are already uh, up to observers at least. So they, you, we can reuse that, and that's the reason why I I put it here. Yeah, I could be in the device too. That's all. Okay, this was the last question. Yeah, We're okay, thank you. Just at the last minute. <laughs>